Wow, what great worship this morning. So church, welcome today into the house of the Lord, wherever that may be for you today. Uh, we're just glad that you're worshiping with us. Um, so enjoy your experience. If you're the first time guest with us, maybe you've dropped in, uh, we just invite you to sit back and worship the Lord with us today. Um, Isaiah 51 verse 12 says this. Now, this is God talking, and he says, I, God, I am he who comforts you. Why do you fear men? And I've been reading that in my devotion life this week, and I have to remember that, man, some days I just need the comfort of God, and I need to be reminded that it's God who comforts me, and it's not men, and it's not my situation. So maybe today, already in church, you worship with song already. Maybe today you're just feeling your own heart and soul that, man, God is just so cool because God is my comfort. Well, anyway, I love Isaiah 51 verse 12 um, that just reminds me, it's God that comforts me. Don't need to worry about it any other thing. And because God comforts me, it allows me to go boldly with the gospel of Jesus Christ to men. So um, anyway, there's some boldness and some confidence there. Well, I love praying for our people. And church, you have done a fabulous job praying for our people. Uh, on the screen, we want to do our prayer blitz. There's a phone number here. If you get ready to text this number, uh, don't send it yet, um, but type it in, get ready uh, to text this prayer and uh, text this person some encouragement. Last Sunday, as you're getting ready to get that number in, last Sunday, we emailed my district superintendent, your district superintendent, who is my pastor, and his response was last week, man, pastor, thank you uh, for sending all of those notes to my inbox and flooding me with all kinds of prayers and encouragement. So church, thank you for that. Um, there's so much power in what we're about to do. So you get ready to send this. This is to Nancy Swart. Nancy Swart is a lady in our church. Uh, she's struggling and dealing with cancer, and she's in the middle of treatments. She's got a few more treatments to go. Um, so we want to just be an encouragement to her today. So church, will you bless Nancy today in these next few minutes with texting her a prayer and texting her maybe a little word of encouragement um, this, today? You ready? All right. You got it? Perfect. All right. You hit send. I'm going to pray. You ready? Let's go. Let's do this. Father, today, thank you so much for being the God who comforts us. Father, thank you for being the God that says we don't have to worry about men. We don't have to fear our circumstances. We don't have to worry about the day because it's you that comforts us. So, Lord, today we pray right now for Nancy. And we ask that you would go by Nancy uh, today, wherever she is there in her home, uh, and just be a blessing. Lord, touch that room that she's in. Touch their house. Uh, Lord, we pray that your hands would cover Nancy today and help her, Lord, physically. Strengthen her body. We ask for your healing touch, Lord, to be in Nancy's life today. Father, help her in these treatments, Lord, that, that make her feel just totally exhausted. Um, make, it, make it almost a, a time where, where she can just feel your revival this morning, Lord. William, will you just go by her side, lift her up, hold her close? And Father, your word tells us that, that we want to wait on you. Um, so Lord, that's what we want to do today as a church. We want to encourage our sister today by praying uh, for your healing touch to touch her life. Be with Kelly, Lord, as he is there and helping uh, with, uh, with the needs that, that Nancy has. So, Lord, pray that Kelly even stays strong and stays healthy. And then we pray for uh, uh, Kayla and Tim as well as they're praying for Mom. And uh, we just are, are lifting this family up to you today, Lord. So be with Nancy today, we pray. Help these treatments to go smoothly. Help the doctors to have wisdom and discernment on the next course of action that needs to be taken. We love you today, Lord, and pray this in your name. And everyone said... Amen and amen and amen. Wow. Well, church, power in prayer. And there's power in this verse that I read. That God comforts us. And then it leads us to this. It leads us to baptism. And on May 31st, that's next Sunday, uh, we're going to have baptism down at McNary Beach at 8.30 in the morning. So if you can get up and grab your coffee and maybe a blanket to wrap up in, because it might be a little chilly. And if you can come to McNary Beach at 8.30 30. And just cheer on those three people that are going to get baptized next week. Um, that would be phenomenal if you would do that. Um, come and cheer on our brothers and sister in Christ that's going to, going to go and get dunked. Now, we're going to the mighty Columbia. It's going to be cold. We're not going to be in it very long. So uh, if you come at 835, you might just miss the whole thing. So, so come a few minutes early. We're going to go in. We're going to go under. And we're getting out. Um, and we're going to give God all the praise and all the glory. Um, if you have not been baptized and you still want to be baptized, then Go on this adventure with us next week. There's a link here on how you can register for baptism. Fill that out, and we'll get to you this week and to make sure that we can 
uh, get you baptized next Sunday, the 31st at 8.30 at McNary Beach. All right. Well, um, we've worked hard with a task force and with our church board at a plan, a re-engagement plan for our church. And so we want to share that with you. I'm not going to share it with you today, um, but there is a posting, and we'll go through that in a minute, uh, of where the plan is located, so you can read that. But on Friday, President Trump makes the announcement that uh, he has deemed churches essential and is asking our states to open churches uh, so we can have a place of worship. Well, I heard that, and I thought, man, that's, that's great. Uh, you know, I, I like that. But then I kind of chuckled a little bit because it hit me like, well, we already know churches are essential. Um, and so I had a good little, little laugh. Maybe you did too, I don't know. Um, I do appreciate our president's uh, recognition of our religious communities and our houses of worship um, and giving us the okay to um, meet. But just because of that doesn't mean that we have to. So we are not meeting today, obviously, on campus, nor are we going to meet next week on campus. Um, I just really feel like we need to stay with the plan that our church leaders have made and uh, just go at the, the slow space, the slow pace that we are going uh, with this re-engagement process. So you can read the plan. The plan is located here at Hernaz, uh, hermersonazarene.org or on our church Facebook page. So there's a video there that you can listen to and watch that will explain the plan. And there's also a PDF that you can open up and read, and uh, it'll give you a bunch of detail, a bunch of information on what you can expect when you come back to campus to worship uh, with our brothers and sisters. Um, I'm really excited about this. So um, on June the 7th, that's the date that we are, are currently looking at, at re-engaging worship on our campus. Uh, and here's, here's the plan. We're going to go to two services on June the 7th. We're going to go to two services, 8.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m., as well as online. Um, so we're excited for that. So if you get up early in the morning and you're ready to go with your coffee, bring the family down and you can worship at 8.30 in the morning. Or you can come at 10.30 in the morning, uh, just as we typically do, and, uh, and worship that way. And uh, you know what? Maybe you are one that's feeling like you're still in the high-risk category for this. And maybe you feel maybe you're not ready yet to re-engage with uh, your brothers and sisters uh, or to come out yet in culture. Maybe you're not feeling well. We want you to know that we want to encourage you to stay home and worship online and be part of our your church family and a part of what we're doing online. That's totally okay. Um, so we're going to be at 8.30, 10.30, and online uh, as a church. Online will be at 10.30 uh, only. Um, but here's the, here's the one thing you have to know, and I'm, I'm excited about this. It's going to take some work a little bit until we get used to it. Uh, hopefully we won't have to do it very long, but there's a registration process. So be looking for the link that will allow you to register your family and how many you're bringing. This is not a registration that's turned into anybody. It really is just solely for us to have a count so we know how to prepare for Sunday morning. You'll have the opportunity to register your family and how many you're bringing for either the 8.30 service or 10.30 service to worship in the worship center or in the ministry center. Now, if you minister, if you worship in the worship center, um, then we're live. We're interacting live with all the physical distancing and all the sanitary stuff. You can read all that in the plan, uh, but all that will be in place. Or you can minister at 8.30 or 10.30 in the ministry center by way of live streaming. So if you want to come and and have a, a live stream party and be with people and socialize uh, in that way, that'll be the room for you. Um, so June 7th is our kickoff date, and it's at 8.30, 10.30, and then 10.30 online as well. So I'm excited for those. So get online and look at the plan, listen to the plan, and uh, so you know how to prepare when you come and you know what to expect when you arrive. So God's good, and all the time, He's good. So we are doing our best at this that we possibly can. And I just want to thank the I want to thank the the task force team, as well as the church board team for uh, helping uh, put this plan together and uh, giving the vote of confidence to move forward in this way at this time as a church. And uh, this is going to be great. So, um, so jump in, and uh, if you have questions, feel free call me, and uh, we'll work we'll work through that. So, all right. So church, 
Uh, let's worship now in our giving, our tithes and offerings. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for, for picking a way to give, to worship the Lord this way online or by texting or by putting a stamp on it and drop it in the mail. Uh, either way, um, Scripture tells us to storehouse tithe, which basically is saying the storehouse is the church and uh, you're to give our first fruits, not the leftovers or the bottoms, but the first fruits of storehouse tithing. You do a fabulous job with that and we thank you for it. So uh, we want to pray and uh, I want to challenge you. Pray about it and you give as God directs, even in the hard times. Uh, God says, just worship me in this way, test it and you'll be blessed. So Father, today, as we pause now to worship uh, in, in our morning today, Lord, we are so excited to be able to praise you with our tithes and our offerings so that the gospel can get out and we can minister as a church to our community and around the world. So Lord, we love you today. Be with these tithes and these offerings in your name. Amen. Amen. Are we getting green bars? Okay. So we apologize, church. Uh, had some technical issues, but we got them figured out. It's okay. Um, so thank you to you for uh, giving of your tithe and your offerings. We're going to do some songs just back to back to back. We're going we're gonna to roll through it. We are so excited to be with you this morning, even with the technical difficulties. We come here together as one people to worship a God, uh, our God, the audience of one. So uh, let's... Stand in your living rooms, just like we are in the sanctuary, and join us in song. Then reaches out to us 
This song is a little on the newer side for us, but uh, sing it with us as you uh, pick it up. And uh, it's just got a great message. Our God is unstoppable, amen. Um, no matter what, impossible things can be done in his name because he's that strong. He's that mighty. He's that powerful. Let's sing this together. It was chilly in here when we first walked in. It ain't chilly no more. <laughs> I am sweating. <laughs> so um, I'm just so thankful, church. Um, I, I just want to say personal thank you as part of the staff for the folks on our task force team, the folks in our church board, 
Um, I just hope you understand how hard they worked to uh, prepare and, and to get us to where we are today, to be in this sanctuary today. Uh, I also want to thank the team, uh, some, some of our senior adults who came in and cleaned this sanctuary for us to make sure it was safe for us as a worship team. Um, it's, it's just amazing who you guys are, and um, I am so blessed and privileged to be on this staff and to be a part of this team and a part of this family. So um, this song was one that uh, about a week ago when I planned today's service, just this song kept resonating for me, resonating for me as, as I thought about today and thought about being back in this, in this building. And, you know, back several weeks ago, we didn't really know when today was going to come, when we would be here in this room and this team would start coming back together. And um, Christ is enough. And no matter, no matter how dark it may seem, uh, no matter, you know, you look at the numbers and we're almost to 100,000 deaths in America it's not dark enough for God. Um, he, he is still that light. He is shining brightly. And we've seen him do amazing things in the midst of this. I mean, we have three baptisms next week yeah. and maybe more are coming. Um, th that's amazing. That's God at work. That's God doing what God does in the midst of uh, trials and storms and tempest. And so as we sing this song, um, my hope is that it becomes a prayer for you. Um, the bridge says, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. And uh, that's my testimony to this morning. Uh, I know for the three other people on the stage and the people back in, in our sound booth, um, they have that testimony that we follow Jesus and there is no turning back. And I hope that is your testimony today. So let's sing this together.
to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning.
Christ. John to redemption by the grace in his eyes. The grace is an ocean where I'll sink Heaven meets earth like an unseen kiss in my heart. When I think about the way that he loves us, oh, how he loves us, oh, how he loves us, oh, how he loves us. Sing it again. Yes, he loves us, oh. Father God, we we are humbled by your grace. We are humbled by the just mere fact that you love us so unconditionally. Yet while we were still sinners, you chose to die for us so that we could have eternal life with you. What an amazing gift. God, as we look towards Pentecost, next week and and when we as people received your your spirit inside of us when the church no longer was a building but it was a people where we as human beings became the temple of the living god god help us remember this week that our bodies are your dwelling place that our bodies are your courts of praise God, I'm so thankful for this church. These great people of worship and love. God, where we gather digitally, we are still one. And you promise where two or more gathered, you are here, so we know you are here with us today. You're in every single home, present and living within us. God, as we move into our time of hearing the word, God, we just ask that you would speak to our hearts. God, that we would be open to receive what you have for us today. God, let us not have any ounce of ourselves, but wholly you in this time. God, we love you. We all said, amen. Well, thank you, church, for your worshiping and your offering and your tithe and your giving. You guys are great, so thank you for that. Also, don't forget, check out the 8.30, 10.30 and online service times that we start in June, on June 7th. It'll be great. We want you to be part of that. Well, today's message comes to us by way of a very good friend of mine. I pray for him every day. Um, he is on my prayer list as 9368. Uh, that is not the number of prayers that I pray each day. 
but it's the number of miles from his bedroom here in Hermiston. It's 900, 300, it's 9,368 miles to his bedroom in Perth, Australia. Now, Mama knows nothing about this very moment. Uh, she thinks that uh, he's still in Australia, which he is, but he's going to be about here by video. So uh, this morning, um, the Isaiah 51 verse 12, where God comforts us. And he comforts us because we can go boldly then to men and not worry about men or fear men. Um, Graydon's living that. So I couldn't think of anybody better than to invite back today by way of video from Australia than my son Graydon Fritz, who's our missionary uh, there in Perth, Australia. Thank you, church, for praying for him. Thank you for financially helping him and supporting him as he is there with the Aboriginal people and uh, working on campus and training and investing in the lives of young students to go out into the field and minister and just take the gospel uh, to places that the gospel just needs to go that nobody else does. So um, let's pray for Graydon as he comes from Perth, Australia, by way of video today to bring us God's word in this challenge today. So Lord, today we want to pray for Graydon as he comes right now uh, through technology. Thank you for the technology that allows this to even happen, God. But we pray today that this message that Graydon has on his heart for us today, Lord, I pray that you'll use it, that you'll speak through it, that you'll clear our hearts and our minds You'll help our eyes see maybe that there's a, a pathway for us right here in America, right in our neighborhood, right in our own workplace maybe, that we don't need to be fearful of, but we know that you comfort us so we can go boldly to those places. So Lord, speak to us now, we pray. Be with great as he speaks in your name. Everyone said, amen and amen. So church, here he is, Perth, Australia, our missionary, Graydon Fritz. Good morning, Hermiston Church of the Nazarene. Welcome. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Graydon Fritz. I'm a missionary here in Perth, Australia, and I am Pastor Eric's oldest son, um, second child. Uh, my sister is older. But yeah, anyway, I'm honored to be able to speak with you guys this morning and to be able to, to make this little video sermon for you guys. Um, we're just going to get right into it. Uh, I think there's, there's some some stories and some testimonies that God wants me to share. Um, and I was only allotted like the 20 to 25 minute range to, to film this. So we're going to just get right into it. Um, but I'm going to pray and then we're going we're gonna to start. So Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you, Father, for uh, the opportunity to be able to speak this morning. Uh, and God, I just want to ask, Father, for you to come and just speak uh, what you want to speak. God, that these testimonies and these stories, Lord, won't just be a story, but they will actually resonate your heart uh, and that they will be able to speak uh, your character, God, and, and that they'll be able to, to encourage and to, to build up faith in people. Father, so we just pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Awesome. Well, just a quick, brief, little, little, little update on what I've been doing. Um, I'm currently doing a uh, Bible core course here in Perth, Western Australia, through Youth with a Mission Perth, um, also known as YWAM. Um, and it's been great. We're about three weeks in, um, and I've learned so much. We have read uh, a really good portion of the Old Testament, a decent amount of the New Testament. We're studying um, John and Acts and Psalms and Proverbs and... It's been crazy, and it's only been three weeks. So we have several weeks to go. It's the 12-week total, total course. Um, but it's been, it's been great, and I've, I've loved it. So um, I'm doing great physically, doing well. I'm healthy. Uh, it's, been, it's been incredible. So thank you guys for you guys, to, for everyone who's been praying for me um, and supporting with me and, and standing with me in prayer. It's been a huge blessing. You guys are very much appreciated. So thank you very, very much. Uh, it's, been, it's been really good. Um, yeah, so this morning I'm just going to talk a little bit uh, about being called to a time such as this. I'm going to be talking to times where uh, maybe there's insecurity, there's not a whole lot of direction, there's not a whole lot of comfort maybe from the situation that you're in. Um, and, and we're going to let the Lord speak through that. And this morning, I think uh, when I was praying with the, when I was praying and, and asking God and waiting uh, with Him for for a direction for this morning as well, uh, I felt Him speak Psalms 23. So if you want to open your Bibles or pause the video and look it up on Google if you're on your phone, you know, or um, 
keep listening while you look it up. It doesn't matter. Uh, I will read it for you guys as well. But Psalms chapter 23, the whole chapter, it's only, it's only six verses, so it's pretty short. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of where we're going to be focusing off of this morning. And, but more of the idea of verse 4 about um, not, not fearing the enemy, not fearing evil, um, and taking, taking refuge and taking comfort in, into the, the staff, the rod and the, the staff. Um, but we'll, we'll get into that. Um, but yeah, so this morning, uh, really just have a, I have a heart for wanting to be able to share about what God is doing currently, like in the moment. Um, both where I am physically, but also where I've been able to, to, in a sense, reach and impact through other people that I've helped disciple. Um, when I say that, I mean like I, last year I was staffing a discipleship training school and we had a group of students. They came, they did their six-month DTS, discipleship training school, and um, then they left. And after the school, they, they, they went home, they went back to their own home nations. And so what I mean by reaching and impacting those nations as well is as I discipled them and, and helped disciple them, I've now been following up with them and I got a couple of testimonies of what's happening in those nations from them. So yeah, it's nothing that like I've done. It's just connections that I have. So I just want to clarify that. But um, it's been cool to be able to see how things that they've learned through, through the discipleship that they've had here through the school, whether it's something that I've said or another leader has said, um, it's really cool to see how it's impacted people's lives. Um, so yeah, we are called to times such as this. I was thinking as well just with how the, the season that we're in, international, both Australia, North America, Europe, Asia, Africa, there's this, there's this idea and this concept of like, what is going to happen? What's, what's going to happen? We're, we're in this state where travel is restricted, right? You have to, you have to be inside. You're limited to like your, how much you can be outside exercising. You're limited by how many people can go into stores. You know, we're, we're, we're a bit restricted physically with what we can do from the day to day. We can't necessarily go to work or to school. Things have been canceled, postponed, moved to next year, right? Like it's a bit crazy and no one's really gone through this before uh, currently. Like, Yourself and myself most likely have never gone through a pandemic before, which is probably pretty safe to say. Um, and so it, there's, just, there's fear, and there's fear of like, what's going to happen? Is God real? There's those questions of, does God really exist? Like, did God bring this? Did he allow this to happen? I'm not going to really get into that stuff today, but those questions are kind of where I'm coming from this morning, is, is there's those questions of, well, what do I do? There's, there's no direction. There's no like, I'm, I'm alone. I'm depressed. I'm having suicidal thoughts. I'm falling back into, into drugs and alcohol. I'm, I'm giving into maybe like old, old habits of like lust of, of like masturbation or pornography. Like, like these things are, are things that I've been able to talk to people about on the streets in the city of Perth here because they're like, there's nothing to do. I'm just sitting at home. I'm, I'm wondering, is, is the religion that I've believed for so long even real? And I'm, and I'm like, wow, okay, people are, people are searching, people are looking, and they're asking these questions and they're being open and they're being honest, currently, like in the moment. And it's, it's incredible to, to see. And so um, I have three quick like testimonies from, from uh, these three, these three guys that I was able to disciple last year, um, they're good friends of mine now. So it's it's more than just a, a like leadership to student. Like they're they're friends of mine. Uh, you know, we don't stay in touch super often, but it's great when we do. Um, I'm not going to use names just for privacy's sake. So I hope you guys are okay with that. Uh, but I will give you the nations that they're from. But this first testimony is, is about a, a guy who, who came and he, he was here and he's he seen God move. He's seen God um, really impact people's lives. And he, he's preached in front of so many people. And uh, people have, have come to know Jesus because of it. Um, but then I'm just, I'm just going to read the message that, that he sent. He's from Indonesia, so the, the grammar is not quite you know, all there. Uh, but it's understandable and I hope you guys can... can uh, 
connect with it possibly in a way if, if this is something that maybe you've you've dealt with, uh, whether it has to do with um, with gambling, which is what his is with, um, or if it's with something else. Um, but he says, hey guys, I have a testimony uh, just to encourage each other. When two or three months after returning to Indonesia, I felt stressful and without realizing it fell into the sin of gambling and I sold all my valuables. Suddenly, someone called me and invited me to pray for a police officer. The police had an accident and his knee was broken. I think he would be paralyzed and unable to walk. When I pray, I just say, God, I am only a sinner. I do not deserve to pray for this police. My heart cried out, so sad for my mistake. After that, I left gambling and repented for it. Last week, a doctor invited me again to pray, and the doctor said to the police you prayed for, were able to walk. It was a miracle beyond all doctor and human estimates that the police would walk again, and, I sure, and I sure, I'm sure the policeman returned to believe in Jesus. Through this situation, I saw Jesus in me again. Wow. That's crazy. So, I know him really well. But in this time, he's, he's, you know, he's, he's fallen into this, this area of gambling, which is, which is sad, yes. But what's incredible is God's still using him. God's still setting him free from things that, that he's working through. And um, it's incredible he's willing to let me share that this morning. But, like, the, the fact that he recognizes that he's, he's a sinner. He's like, Lord, I've, I've open, openly been sinning right now. And I've given in to these temptations. I've given in to gambling. I've, I've gone and I've lost my possessions. I had to, I've sold them. Um, is, one, humbling to be able to, to admit that and to be able to give someone like myself permission to share that with, with, with you guys. Um, so huge respect for, for him on that. As that's, that's incredible. But God's doing something in his life that is so cool because as he steps out and he says no to the enemy, no to evil, he's able to say yes to the Lord. and He's be able to, to pray for a police officer, which in his nation uh, of Indonesia, um, they're, they're not necessarily a, a very Christian nation. Um, there's, there's a lot of other religions there that, that would go more popular uh, in a sense and they would be uh, more believed than Christianity and so that's that's incredible um, that he's been able to pray and be able to see God move uh, in this in this man's life um, he's stepping up to the plate for times such as this he's stepping up and saying yeah I may have given in in this season I may have I may have um, not taken into account like my actions and now I'm here and I'm I am where I am but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this anyway. I'm going to say yes to the Lord and I'm going to step up to the plate, move off my spot and say, yeah, we're going we're gonna to pray for this man. Even though I don't deserve to be praying for him, I'm going to pray for him. And uh, that's, so, that's so cool. Um, that really takes me to Psalms 23, uh, verse 4. It says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. He, he stood against evil. He said no. He took comfort knowing that, that the Lord's rod and staff uh, were there, as in his, his hand, to be able to guide him back in, to be able to, to come in and say, yes, like, I'm still going to use you. I still love you. I still have value for you, even now. And so that's a really cool, cool testimony uh, that, that I felt led to share this morning. Uh, another one is from a man that is from the United States of America. He's from North America. Um, and uh, this one is more pandemic related, but it's really cool to be able to see that he's been able to reach out with, with people uh, currently in this situation over the last, over the last month or so um, and being able to see God do some pretty cool things. And so I'm going to read uh, what he sent me. And uh, basically he says, uh, great him. God has definitely used this pandemic to open some doors for me to share Christ. There are a few of my coworkers who I've gotten to know very well, especially since being home. They're both believers, but are fairly young in their faith. And through this pandemic, they've been asking me a lot of questions about the nature of God, his goodness and, and plan, and all sorts of other questions about how to walk, in, walk a Christian life. Just questions starting off with, did God send us COVID? And then those conversations developing into me sharing testimonies from uh, DTS and really sharing who God is. It's been cool to see how I've been able to mentor them in their faith. I, I have even been able to mentor them. Oh, I have even, 
gave, I even, <laughs> sorry, wow. I, I am currently trying to get new glasses so I can help read better, so bear with me. I have uh, even given, gave them uh, that YWAM Perth flyer we were given as part of our graduation package. I know God could have opened these doors in other ways, but, they really, but the reality check that this pandemic has caused has really been a so shortcut to those deep conversations with people. And uh, that's, that's what he sent me, and he's got a really good point. Um, there, right at, right at the end, he says, I know God could have opened the doors in another way, but the reality check that this pandemic has caused has really been a shortcut to those deep conversations with people. Okay, he's recognizing that there's a shortcut to people right now. Now, with the idea and the concept of like standing against the enemy and letting God lead us, as he says here in Psalms 23, letting him lead us, like lead us forward and, and like choosing not to fear evil. Don't be afraid to speak up. Don't be afraid to be bold. Don't be afraid to say, well, do you know Jesus? Sometimes getting that first sentence out and saying like, do you know Jesus? Do you understand him? Do you like, have you ever heard his name before? Uh, sometimes that's the hardest thing to do. I can speak from experience with that. It's, it's hard. It's not always easy. Um, but like there's this opportunity right now to be able to see one of the biggest, if not the biggest revivals in history come from this whole COVID season because people are in a place like these people here in the States right now, they're in a place where they're willing to open up. They're willing to have their minds filled with what God, who God is and, and what he can do and, and what he wants for them. Look, they're, they're searching for stuff. They might believe, they might not believe. As he says here, like the people that, that he's been able to, to uh, witness to, they're, they're, they're newer in their faith. They haven't been Christians super long. Um, but he, they've, they're being willing to open up. You're, you're cutting off those, those possibly like those mindsets of like, oh, I need to know them well enough. I need to know them for six months, a year. I've known them for 20 years. I don't know, maybe next year. Uh, we'll be close enough to where I can, I can share the gospel with them. No, like he's, he's cutting those, those things off and saying, no, like I know who they are. I know them. I've gotten to know them. And uh, they're willing to listen, so I'm going to share. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to try and build up this friendship more. I'm, I'm going to share it because they're, it's a shortcut. In a sense, God's opening up this door to where people's hearts are willing to listen. And if they're willing to listen, people's lives will be changed. But there will only be changed if we act in obedience to what God has called us to do, and that is to share the gospel. That is to share and be relational with people and to be able to share God's love. Um, and just like, share your experience. You don't need to know, you don't need to know all of this. I don't know all of this. And I spend every day reading it. I spend every day trying to figure things out in this that I'm like, I don't understand it. I don't understand it like this passage or this scripture. I don't understand what it means. Who's saying it? When was it written? I don't know. Some of the homework I've been doing for, for the Bible school I'm taking right now, is like, when was this book written? I don't know. I don't know when it was written. What does it mean that it says this? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what it means. And you know, I'm not the only one. I'm sure many of you have questions like, I don't understand that, which is okay. That's fine. No one knows and understands the entire Bible fully with not needing to know anymore because we will never know the, the fullness of God. We, we know what he reveals to us. But um, staying on track with the idea of like cut, taking the shortcut and, and sharing the gospel, I want to encourage you guys to, to do that. I want to encourage you guys to, to, to share. Stand against Choose, choose to not give in to evil. Choose to not give in to the enemy and say, ah, I stutter too much. I mean, Moses used that excuse and God gave him his brother Aaron to, to help him with that. So you can have an excuse, but God still wants you to do what he's asked you to do if, if, you're, if you're following with that. You know, Moses didn't want didn't to go and, and speak to Pharaoh. He didn't want to lead the Israelites out of Egypt, right? But he did. Even after he said, I can't, I stutter, I, I can't speak, um, God 
provided Aaron to, to help him with that, which is incredible. It's so, it's so good. Um, so yeah, cut, use the shortcut. If people are asking like these questions, go for it, do it. It's so good. It's, it's incredible to, to see the, the blessings that God wants to, to bring through this time and through this season. There's another one from a man uh, from the Netherlands that, I, that um, I'm friends with, also from uh, meeting him back here in Perth last year. Um, he says, my motivation to read daily, uh, to read daily, seek him and walk with him, uh, fainted in the year after DTS. I still knew him, but I fell back in old patterns when it comes uh, to always trying to solve things myself instead of bringing um, him into it. During this time where we are focused into social distancing, I started thinking about it more. I started reading a book again that I, I bought ages ago. It's called God, a, a Moral Monster. Spoiler, no, also starting praying from the time. Uh, spoiler, oh, no, he didn't spoil the book, if that's what he knows. I've never heard of the book, um, but anyway. Um, he says he also started praying from time to time again. Last week, I had a full day with, with Aaron, which is one of his friends, uh, in a long time. We got the idea to start a Bible study uh, study group ages ages ago, but never invested time to set it up properly. Next Sunday is our first meet, and I couldn't be happier. I'm slowly seeing that with all the distractions life brings, brings being gone, I focus more on him, and I get hungry again. I realize that I didn't miss the normal world. It's definitely opening doors. That's incredible. And uh, one thing that I think is really cool is when he sent me this last week, that means this Sunday is the first Sunday, as in today when you guys are watching this, this is the first time um, in the last year that he's going to be starting a Bible study. So if you, if you want to pray for him, uh, go for it because he's, he's trying to walk in obedience to the Lord and he, he's doing it. Um, also taking that shortcut, he's like, all right. We're in, a, we're in a place to where restrictions are starting to lift. We can kind of start meeting again. Let's do it. Let's, let's, let's bring the gospel when we can. We're called as Christians to, to step out into faith. We're called to be able to go out and to share. And uh, I felt led to share these three, these three stories this morning because these things are all happening currently. These are happening uh, right now internationally and worldwide. Um, and it's not just, just them and it's not just me, but it's, it's you as well. You guys can, can go out and, and share. If there's somebody on your heart that you're like, man, I've, I've been friends with them for so long, or I know that they've maybe had a, a bit of a hard marriage life, or they don't have a family, they don't have mom or dad, they don't have brothers or sisters, they, 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 you know, they might be homeless, they might be living on the street. Like, take time, send them a message, uh, FaceTime them, right? And we're, we're called to, to share, and we're called to times like this, not to, not to run in fear, but to let the Lord comfort us and to lead us. Let him comfort us and to lead us because um, Psalms 23, starting from the beginning all the way through the end, it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of your enemy. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now is the time that we want the Lord to lead us. He, we want him to lead us like uh, into those green pastures. He want, we want him to lead us next to those still waters. We want him to comfort, right? We, we, want, him, we want him to do that. But that comes from, from knowing his word and that comes from active, actively putting into practice what you know. You might only know one Bible verse. This might be the verse, first Bible verse, this verse, the first thing from the Bible you've ever heard. That's fine. Go and share it. I want to encourage you and motivate you to go and share it because this is the time where people are asking, if, if God is real. They're asking, is he a, a provider? It, did he make COVID happen? Did he allow COVID to happen? Does Jesus love me? Did Jesus die on the cross for me? Does he even know who I am? Yes, 
Jesus knows who you are. God knows who you are. God knows every head on your every hair on your head, and He knows um, everything about you. But He needs you. He, he He wants you, and He His heart breaks for you to actually accept Him and and to invite Him into your life. And so this is the time where us as Christians need to step up and share. We need to step up and and walk in boldness and to walk knowing that what we speak can actually change somebody's life. These, these testimonies is one saying, I'm not even worthy to pray for this man. I'm not even worthy to pray. We're all called to pray and spend time with God, but he's saying he's not even worthy because he recognizes the, the sin in his life. But he walks in obedience and he says, yes, God, I will pray for him. And he prays and God moves. The next one, right? He, he's, he's saying these, these conversations to be able to say, yes, like God, I want to share with you. I want to be able to um, share what you're, what you're doing. Skip all of the, the small talk. Skip the small talk. Go, share the gospel. Answer questions. You might not know everything. That's fine. That's fine. Just share. Share what you know. Share what you know about God. Share his love. Share the fact that he provided for you. If you have food on your table, he's provided for you, right? And the, the other one as well is like, got lazy in faith. Stopped reading the Bible, stopped going to, going to church, stopped praying. But then God says, no, no, you, you, you need to pray. You remember that idea of, of wanting to do a, a Bible study years ago, ages ago? Well, we'll do it. And now they're starting it again. They're, they're getting in their faith. They're actually going to actively pursue it. They're making that choice to, to get things rolling forward. The opportunity here to see people come to know the Lord is massive because it is an international situation that we're in right now. It's an international thing. We are all very much aware of the current state of the world. But if we want to see change, we need to speak up. We need to speak up and say, hey, did you know that God loves you? He cares about you? He, do you know that he, he sees you? So let's share our faith. Let's share it. Let's, let's share, share the word. This is something I just want you to be encouraged by. I, I'm encouraged by the fact that I know that, that you guys back home are praying for me. And I, I'm encouraged uh, all the time. Because when, when I'm sharing with friends here and people here as well that, that I either live with or that I work with. And they say like, man, like, dude, like you just went out and you're like, you just shared. I'm like, yeah. I, I did because I, I, I know the Lord and, and I, I want to share what he's doing in my life, but also knowing that I have support from you guys and I have support from my church family and my friends back home and my family back home. Like that speaks volumes because you guys, you guys are, are listening and watching and paying attention. And if there's somebody, um, you know, back home that maybe it's your neighbor, maybe it's a, an old family friend or an old family member. Uh, if they don't, if they don't know the Lord, or maybe they know who He is, but they're sitting at home depressed, and they're they're thinking these different things, like what you know, going through drugs or alcohol or, or suicidal thoughts, because they feel alone and lost and abandoned, or they feel um, like it's too late for them to know the Lord, and that the world is you know coming to an end, <laughs> right? Like if that's the state of mind that they're in, you can speak so much volume into their life. You can speak peace and comfort. You can speak um, the goodness of God. And you can share with them how God wants to lead them into, into green pastures, which is provision. That He wants to lead them along still waters and bring peace to their life. That He wants to, he wants to guide them and direct them through, through teaching them and building relationships with them through His rod and His staff. So, I don't know, maybe this morning it seems a little bit all over and it was it's short but short and sweet isn't necessarily a bad thing <laughs> so just be encouraged this morning be encouraged by the Lord and what he's doing be encouraged um, from maybe these testimonies of how God's moving currently in the last couple weeks in the last month or so um, internationally this is through three different nations in three different three different continents right this is so cool and God is moving and he, he wants you to help him move through the nation. He wants you to help change people's, change people's lives. So, 
for now, I think I'm out of time. I think I uh, went over a little bit if I can see the numbers on my, on my camera. But I just want to close this out with prayer. Um, so let's just pray. But God, I just want to say thank you, Lord, for, for this morning. Lord, and just everything that you've, uh, you've done. Lord, I, I pray and I trust, Lord, that the things that, that I felt led to say this morning will come together and that they'll make sense and that they'll be able to resonate with people um, who are watching this right now, God, and that people will be inspired to go and, and to share, to be able to share your love and to be able to share uh, what, you, what you have spoken, God, for their life. And that is, that is to, to share what they know about you, Lord, and to, to be confident, saying no to the enemy, saying no to fear, choosing not to be afraid, but choosing to walk in confidence and boldness and say, yeah, I'm going to go talk to that person They've been in my heart lately. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call them up and, and ask them how they're doing. Ask them if there's anything I can pray for. God, that they'll be encouraged to step out in faith and to, to be eager and on the edge of their seats to see you want to move and to change people's lives. So we just pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Well, that is, that is me for this morning. Thank you guys for, for tuning in. Um, yeah, if you guys want to contact me and ask questions about further things that I'm doing or how to donate or what you guys can be praying for, um, shoot me a message over Facebook or Instagram or uh, I guess somehow find my, my number. Um, sister, church secretary, if you, guys, if you want to put like a link below the video when you show it or something that can help with people reach, uh, contacting me and reaching out to me, uh, that'd be great. Thank you. But uh, yeah, that is it. God bless. And uh, have a great day and have fun sharing the gospel, sharing the word, sharing what you know. See ya! Right on, church. Man, I hope you are blessed today. Take the challenge today to, uh, to go. <laughs> go boldly. Share your story and use it this week. Be a blessing this week. Love one another and whatever it takes, right? Don't worry about men, but know that God, God comforts you. Well, let's pray today. Don't forget, get on, check out 8.30, 10.30 and online services coming and starting up again in a different format on June the 7th. Uh, you'll want to not miss out on any of that. So jump in and be part. Lord, today, thank you for this message from Graydon. Thank you, Lord, for a church that loves him, that prays for him, that supports him uh, with letters and emails, that supports him with prayer support, that supports him with, with finances. Uh, Father, I just pray that, that this will be a missionary that will go and touch people there in that part of the world. But Lord, I thank you for the message today that challenges my own heart to be able to, to go boldly and know that I can do it. I can do it. I may not think I can, but I can do it. I can go to places where I don't think I can, but I can. So Lord, help me walk boldly. Father, we love you today. Be with us as a church. In your name, amen. All right, church, God bless you. Great to have you today. Enjoy your long weekend.